Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to St. Peter's Lutheran Church on this Lord's Day. Welcome on this fifth Sunday after Pentecost, this Father's Day. Let us pray. Loving God, we give you thanks and praise for fathers young and old. We pray for young fathers newly embracing their vocation. May they find courage and perseverance to balance work, family, and faith in joy and sacrifice. We pray for fathers around the world. Who, we pray for those fathers who, whose children have died, are lost, or suffering. May they know that the God of compassion walks with them in their sorrow. We pray for men who are not fathers, but still mentor and guide others with fatherly love and advice. We remember fathers, grandfathers, who are no longer with us. Help us cherish the good memories and soften us toward forgiveness if that is still needed. And dear Lord, surround all families with your love and fill each parent with your divine wisdom and strength. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord be with you. Please do take note of all the announcements that are in your bulletin, particularly the kids' camps that are coming up soon. The first one will be here Tuesday, June 28th. And then in the weeks after that at Trinity, Exo, Cormorant, St. Luke's Episcopal, and First Lutheran in Audubon. We're all taking turns hosting these kids' camps. It's an exciting venture for us as we work together, and it's really fun to talk to the other leaders at the other churches and hear the different ideas. It's gonna be, no, no two weeks are gonna be the same. There's gonna be a lot of fun and fellowship and faith shared with the kids in those weeks. So if you have children or if you have children in your life that you think might be interested in it, please give them a heads up. And many thanks to all the adults who are helping us kick off the kids' camps this summer. I'll be gone the next two Sundays, and I will miss you, but my family and I are going on vacation next Sunday, and then the Sunday after that, I've been invited to go back to my home church in Henning for their final service in their old sanctuary before it's torn down. They're building a new sanctuary, so it's all good, but it will be very special to be back there for the final worship service in that place. Are there any other announcements from the congregation this morning? In the prayers of the church, we remember the life and witness of Gene Kohler, Lloyd's brother, who died this past week. His funeral was held at First Lutheran in Detroit Lakes yesterday. God bless the memory of all the saints in light. Let's stand as we begin worship this morning. Page 94 at the front part of your hymnal, the confession and forgiveness. We gather in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. 
Let's join in singing. We sing, rise, shine, you people. Our prayer of the day is on your celebrate insert in your bulletin. We'll pray this prayer together. O oh Lord God, we bring before you the cries of a sorrowing world. In your mercy, set us free from the chains that bind us and defend us from everything that is evil. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. sought out by those who, didn't, who did not ask, to be found by those who did not seek me. I said, here I am, here I am, to a nation that did not call my name. I held out my hands all day long to rebellious people who walk in, in a way that is not good, following their own devi devices a people who provoke me to my face continually sacrificing in gardens and offering incense on bricks who sit inside tombs and spend the night in secret places who eat swine's flesh who broth and abominable things in their vessels who say, keep to yourself, do not come near me, for I am too holy for you. There, these are smoke in the nostrils, a fire that burns all day long. See, it is written before me, I will not keep silent, but I will repay, I will indeed repay for their laps, their inquinities and their ancestors in Quinties together, say, says the Lord. Because they offered incense on the mountains and revealed me on the hills, I will measure into their laps full payment for their actions. Thus says the Lord, as the, as the wine is found in the clusters, and they, and they say, 
do not destroy it, for there is blessing in it. So I will do for my servants' sake, and not destroy them all. I will bring forth descendants from Jacob, and from Judah, inheritors of my mountains. My chosen shall inherit it, and my servants shall settle there. But you, O Lord, be not far away. O my help, hasn't to my aid. Save me from the lion's mouth. From the horns of wild bulls you have rescued me. You who fear the Lord, give praise. All of Jacob's lines, line give glory. Stand in awe of the Lord, all, all you offspring of Israel. From you comes my praise in the great assembly. I will perf pre perform my vows in sight of those who fear the Lord. All the ends of earth shall remember and turn in to the Lord. All families of nations shall bow before God. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned, imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarium until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinary for the Christ Jesus you are all children of God through, through faith through faith as many of you as were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ there is no longer Jew or Greek there is no longer slave or free there is no longer male or female, for all of you, one in Christ Jesus, and if you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. <laughs> The Holy Gospel for this Lord's Day is from Luke, the eighth chapter. Please join me in reading this gospel. Then Jesus and his disciples arrived at the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. As he stepped out on land, a man of the city who had demons met him. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he did not live in a house but in the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he fell down before him and shouted at the top of his voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you, do not torment me. For Jesus had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many times it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the wilds. Then Jesus asked him, what is your name? He said, Legion, for many demons had entered him. They begged him not to order them to go back into the abyss. Now there was on the hillside a large herd of swine was feeding. 
and the demons begged Jesus to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the swine, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and was drowned. When the swine herd saw what had happened, they ran off and told it in the city and in the country. Then people came out to see what had happened, and when they came to Jesus, they found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the one who had been possessed by demons had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked Jesus to leave them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with them. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. So he went away, proclaiming throughout the city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of the Lord. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 105 at the front part of your hymnal. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. And at this time, I invite the children to come up for the youth message. Well, good morning. How are you doing today? I know some of you were at Bible school this week. Did you have fun at Bible school? Yeah, it was pretty fun, wasn't it? I had a good time. Oh, so I wanted to show you something. Well, first, I'm going to ask a question. So, do you like fruit? Yes. yes. If someone asked you what your favorite fruit is, what would you say? Strawberry? Strawberries and blueberries. Okay. Oranges. Mmm, yes. Do you peel them yourself or do you ask someone to help you? You do, awesome, okay, he peels them himself. All right, how about others? Do you have a favorite fruit? Everything except honeydew and cantaloupe. <laughs> Those are awesome, yeah? You know why? Fruit of the Spirit, very good. <laughs> Yes, she's talking about, she said she knew where I was going with this. She put two and two together. Because Fruit of the Spirit is going to be our theme for our kids camp that's coming up. And her mom is creating the craft that we're going to do that day. And so Lily and Harper have an inside scoop on what we're doing. But it's going to be so fun. Now, all right, I have some pictures here. And... <laughs> I want you to tell me if you think it is regular fruit or fruit of the spirit. All right, are you ready? And this. Regular fruit. Regular fruit. It's watermelon. Very good. Now, how about this? Fruit of the spirit. Fruit of the spirit. What does that say? Peace. Peace. Yes, fruit of the spirit. Peace. We're going to go talk more about the difference in a second here. But how about this? Regular fruit. That's grapes, right? But how about this? Fruit of the Spirit, love. Do you know what the fruit of the Spirit are? Can you name some of them? 
Ja? Ja? Goodness, love, faithfulness, mm -hmm. peace, joy, uh-huh. There's nine of them. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. Oh, one more. Kind, kindness, kindness. So fruit of the Spirit. And so just like, you know, um, like cherries grow where cherries grow and bananas grow where bananas grow and grapes grow where grapes grow, the fruit of the Spirit is what grows in us when we live God's way, when God asks us to. And all those things sound really good, don't they? Love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness. Those are things we want to have more of in our lives, right? And so when you come to kids' camp, and I hope all of you will be able to come, we're going to be talking more about that in lots of different ways. The fruit of the Spirit. Let's pray together. Dear God, we thank you for summertime, for these days that are long, for the, for the weather that is warm. We thank you too for the rain that falls to help the crops grow. And Lord, we pray that you always help the fruit of the Spirit to grow well in us. Help us to foster all of those attributes that show that we belong to you. Lord, bless these kids Guard them and guide them today and every day. Bless their families. Help them grow together in your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. And s some people have been kindly restocking the candy store. So there's candy here if you'd like some on your way back. The Lord be with you. Well, Last Sunday morning, I woke up early, as I usually do on Sunday mornings. <laughs> Sunday mornings, I always get up a little bit earlier because I like to sit with my coffee for a little bit and put the finishing touches on my sermon. And I usually never, I try to not turn on the news or Facebook because I don't like to get distracted with other things. And so, I had no idea when we were gathered here for worship last week that during the night, just hours before we came together, that there had been a mass shooting, this time at a gay nightclub in Orlando. <sighs> of course, this has filled the news this last week. It has erupted all sorts of debates all over again, from gun control to the Muslim faith to the LGBTQ community to the presidential race. And those debates, those conversations, they can seem futile. They can even seem infuriating at times. And yet we must talk and we must listen as we think about the kind of nation we are and the kind of nation we will become. So on Monday morning, as I watched the news, I kept thinking about the recurring violence and the ever-present feeling of helplessness that I feel when I hear about this news. That's the worst part, isn't it? That month by month, year by year, another shooting in a nightclub, in a church, in a mall, on an army base, at a college, at a high school, at a movie theater, at an elementary school, at places of business. The list goes on and on, and now we feel with some certainty that that list is only going to grow with time. And so that morning, I got on the phone with some of the other pastors, and I said, what would you think about us just coming together to pray about this and invite anybody who wants to come to join us as well? And each one said they thought that would be good, and so we cobbled together a prayer service, and we had it Tuesday night here. We got the word out as best we could with Facebook and with prayer chains and calling serving groups. And if word didn't get to you, I'm sorry, but we did put it together really, really fast. 
but I felt the spirit move in that somehow six clergy, an organist, and a magnificent soloist were all able to clear their schedule enough to be here and pray for peace, realizing it could be very well just us who showed up. But ultimately, there were about 50 people who came, representing churches from all around the area. And as part of the service, we read those names, the names of those who died in the Orlando nightclub shooting, so many young women and men gone. And as I read those names, a list that was mostly young men, I realized I wasn't reading those names as a pastor, but as a mother of soon-to-be young men. And as I prayed, I was grieving for all their mothers who would never get to spend time with their children again here on earth. So many relationships cut off, like sentences begun and left incomplete forever. The psalm for today is part of the psalm that is often read on Maundy Thursday during the part of the service where the altar is stripped because Jesus spoke words from that psalm as he hung dying on the cross. However, in the most general sense, Psalm 22 is about a person who's crying out to God to save him and then ultimately thanking God for being saved. And the text, that psalm goes really well with our gospel, which is the story of a man who had demons. He's lived in the tombs. To his family, he's as good as dead. He had been kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but the demons that possessed him were so strong that he could break free. And for a long time, he had been seized and controlled by these demons. The man told Jesus to go away. He says, do not torment me, Jesus. And in turn, Jesus asks him his name. This is a regular part of ancient exorcism rituals. Ever since the Garden of Eden, humans, human control over things was expressed by having a name to call it. And the demon responds, what does he say his name is? His name is Legion. Legion, which means a vast amount. In fact, Legion was the name for a, a vast army. 3,000 to 6,000 men in the ancient Roman army was a legion. And Jesus orders the demons to go into a herd of pigs, and the demons come out of the man, and they rush into the pigs, and the pigs rush down a bank and into a lake, and they drown. It's a story about things that are unclean. Tombs are unclean. Pigs are unclean. We're told it was an unclean spirit. When Jesus casts out the demons, the man is released from the chains of possession and the deep darkness that clouded his mind. And, and then we are reminded, it's a lot like the psalmist expresses, that time of torment to a time of deliverance. Take note then, in verse 38, the man asks to go with Jesus. But what does Jesus say? He says, no, go home. Go home and tell people about all that God has done for you. If you read ahead <clears throat> to the rest of chapter 8, there of Luke, it, of Luke, it's filled with similar stories. A man named Jairus comes to Jesus. His only daughter has died. And Jesus goes to that daughter, and he tells her to get up. And she does. And the other story is the story of the woman who has the issue of chronic bleeding. She's been suffering for 12 years from bleeding, and she comes up to Jesus, and she just touches the fringe of his cloak, and she is immediately cured. And in each of these instances, each one of these, Jesus tells them that they have been saved. These stories show us that Jesus provides salvation in a broader sense than we often think about it. In the Lutheran church, we often think of salvation as eternal life and forgiveness from sins, but here Jesus is talking about salvation as being restored to a community. 
It happened to the, the demoniac when the demons were cast out. He, he was no longer ostracized. He could go home. And the woman with the chronic bleeding, by law, she had been considered unclean for 12 years, which means she had to be separate from her people for 12 years. Being healed meant that she could be restored to her people, to her community. And with the father whose daughter dies and Jesus brings her back to life, a relationship is restored, a father and a daughter together again. Your faith has saved you. Your faith has brought you back into community, back into relationship. Jesus, the one who frees us from bondage and brings salvation, but not solely concerned with forgiving us and our eternal life to come, which he is concerned about, enough to die for us, but also desiring that we know wholeness in this life as well. Because isolation is deadly. Father's Day is always a strange time for me. I've told you stories about my father before, that he was a pastor for a few years until he retired due to disability when he was only in his late 30s. And his disability was seizures that couldn't be controlled easily with medication. And it threw him into a depression that hovered over the rest of his days and thus over our family as well. And a key part of that became isolation. He rarely left the house. In fact, he was so paralyzed by his fears and by his sadness that there was not one single event he came to for us kids when we were growing up. Every single band concert, play, confirmation day, graduation day, wedding day went by without my dad there. His world became so small and his fear became so great that he was angry most of the time. Isolation does that to a person. And I know I've talked about this before, and I know I will again, because this story is a part of me so, so deeply in my heart, but my home pastor and my home church were means of salvation and community and connection for me so much during those years I was growing up. Our pastor would come visit my dad. He was about the only person that my dad would allow to come in our house. And our congregation sent cards and gifts out to my dad, letting them know that they were thinking about him, even though the years ticked by and they never saw him. And at his funeral, they filled that little church just to be there, to pay respect to him, and to be there for my mom and my brother and me. My dad, whether he was unwilling or unable to do otherwise, he chose isolation. But our church community's only response to him over and over and over again was love, love, love. The community I found there, the embrace and the wellspring of goodness that I found in my home church was the reason that the church became a symbol of peace and hope to me. And I pray so hard it can be that for all people. I pray that in troubled times the church will always stand for things like peace and love and acceptance, not just toward the people who are like us or who we think, think like we do, but working hard to be that way in all ways. Crabby people, love them. People of other religions, love them. People who are of other races, love them. People who are full of tattoos and piercings, love them. People who are voting for someone you don't approve of, love them. People who are lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgendered, love them. People who are on the opposite side of the gun control issue from you, love them. The immigrants, love them. This radical acceptance and love is the way of Jesus. And it is to be our way as his people. 
the things that build community, the things that draw us out of isolation, those are the same things that build peace. Whenever we join together and we pray, <clears throat> when we come together and we sing, each time we calmly talk to each other and listen as well, whenever we take the time to visit those who are lonesome or sick or grieving, every time we put energy into tearing down the walls that separate us instead of energy into building them up, we are saying yes to community and yes to peace and indeed to the kingdom of God. Let there be peace and let it begin with us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The table is prepared. You are welcome. You may be seated.
we stand for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace until life everlasting. May the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We'll sing our closing song.